Hello my friends and welcome back to Monster Monday. For this episode, we're gonna keep it pretty low level, but have some fun with it. We're checking out the troglodyte. Okay guys, so I have um, the troglodyte from fifth edition, and then I have this third edition troglodyte um, description because I think there's a little bit of expansion here in the older edition that might have some helpful tips and flavor for how to integrate these things. So we'll start off with fifth and then we'll kind of compare between the two editions. So troglodytes, the savage degenerate troglodytes squat in the shallow depths of the Underdark in a constant state of war against their neighbors and one another. They mark the borders of their territories with cracked bones and skulls or with pictographs painted in blood or dung. Perhaps the most loathsome of all humanoids, troglodytes eat anything they can stomach. They dwell in filth. The walls of their cavern homes are smeared with grime, oily secretions, and the debris of their foul feasting. Simple-minded brutes. Troglodytes have a simple communal culture devo devoted almost entirely to procuring food. Too simple to plan more than a few days into the future, troglodytes rely on constant raids and hunting to survive. They take sadistic pleasure in hunting intelligent creatures weaker than themselves and show no mercy toward those they capture and drag back to their lairs to be devoured. The largest and toughest troglodytes lead the hunt and become the leaders of their tribes, However, if a leader shows any weakness or hesitation, other troglodytes attack and eat it in a frenzy. Troglodytes make little and build less, scavenging their possessions from their prey. They understand the value of metal weapons and armor and fight among one another for the right to have such items. A troglodyte tribe might be torn apart by battles over a single longsword. Devotees of Laogzed. Laogzed. I don't know how to say that. Laogzed. Some troglodytes venerate Laogzed, a demonic, monstru monstrously fat toad lizard that slumbers in the abyss. Laogzed offers the troglodytes nothing in return except aspiration, for it is the dream of his troglodyte worshippers to become a, as fat, well-fed, and wearily content as he seems to be. So, I mean, that in and of itself is pretty valuable information. It gives you the setting where you might use these troglodytes. Uh, how they would interact with a party of adventurers coming into their territory. Um, let's take a look at the 5th edition stat block. So armor class is 11, it's natural armor only. Uh, 2d8 plus 4 hit points, movement speed of 30, dark vision of 60. They have chameleon skin, so the troglodyte has advantage on dexterity stealth checks made to hide. Stench, any creature other than a troglodyte that starts its turn within 5 feet of the troglodyte must make a... DC 12 con save or be poisoned until the start of the creature's next turn. On a successful saving throw, the creature is immune to the stench of all troglodytes for one hour. Sunlight sensitivity. While in sunlight, the troglodyte has disadvantage on attack rolls as well as on wisdom perception checks that rely on sight. Actions, multi-attack. The trog makes three attacks, one with its bite and two with its claws. So it has a bite of plus four to hit doing 1d4 plus 2 piercing damage, and it has claws that do plus 4 to hit with 1d4 plus 2 slashing damage. Now, this creature is listed as a 1 quarter challenge rating. So I want you to imagine a, a lower level group going up against these. They get three attacks per round, each one. So if there are like 10 of them, that's a lot of attacks. So even though these are considered challenge rating one quarter, if you upscale the numbers of them, it can be pretty challenging even for like mid-level people. I mean, if you had a group of like fifth level people going in to the Underdark and they stumble into a Trog tribe's you know, domain and there's 30 of these things, that's gonna be a challenge, especially with the whole poison thing. Um, let's take a look before we talk about how to use them. Let's just compare some of the lore from the older edition. Troglodytes are revolting lizard creatures as evil as the foulest of demons. They are very warlike and savor the taste of their enemies, especially humanoids. Trogs look somewhat humanoid, standing about 5 feet tall and weighing about 150 pounds. 
They have spindly but muscular arms and walk erect on their squat legs, trailing a long slender tail. Their heads are lizard-like and crowned with a frill that extends from the forehead to the base of the neck. Their eyes are black and beady and very sensitive to even the dimmest light. Trogs are not especially intelligent, but their ferocity and natural cunning more than compensate for this deficiency. They often launch bloody raids against humanoid settlements or ambush caravans in warm climates. They guard their lairs aggressively, lashing out at anyone who comes too near. Troglodytes speak draconic. Um, in combat, uh, so basically here they say half of a group of trogs are armed only with claws and teeth. The rest carry one or two javelins and long spears. They normally conceal themselves, launch a volley of javelins, then close to attack. If the battle goes against them, they retreat and attempt to hide. They have uh, the stench ability here. They have some skills. Trog society. Trogs are ruled by the largest and fiercest among them. So that's basically the same. The difference here is that they talk about encountering them outside of the Underdark. So, for example, trogs like to lair near humanoid settlements to prey on inhabitants and their livestock. They raid on moonless nights when their dark vision and camouflage are most effective. Trogs prize steel above all else. Though individuals usually have no wealth, a lair may contain valuable items casually discarded, pushed into corners, or mixed in with the refuse. The lair is usually a large cave with smaller caves for the hatchlings and eggs. A lair has hatchlings equal to one-fifth the number of adults and eggs equal to one-tenth. The trogs revere Laugzed. Um, so that is, that's valuable in terms of planning and lore. So just on a basic encounter level, obviously these could be something that you could throw at a party who's venturing into the Underdark, but not just into the Underdark. I mean, basically any kind of cave system, mine, mountain, whatever, what have you, underground. Uh, maybe even in an urban environment, you could find them in sewers or in the natural caverns that are, have, have broken through into the sewers. So they're like living below a city and, and few if anyone knows that. Um, but because of their nature, I think you could also have them, like was suggested in the older book, you could have an encounter where they come out and raid a village, you know, on the surface at night. Um, and maybe it's a small raiding party, and now the adventurers are tasked with, like, tracking them down, and they track them back to this series of cavernous tunnels that connect to a much larger underground cave system where, you know, you could have any number of these things. Now, again, are they super powerful? No. Um, I mean, we're talking about an average of 13 hit points each, and they're, they're you know, one-quarter challenge rating. So by themselves, they're not powerful. But I think the value of these is in the ability for them to hide and then attack. And then when they do get to melee combat, they're attacking with three attacks per turn. So I think the numbers here are the key. Um, playing the raid might also be something you can integrate into a much larger adventure. So here's an example. Suppose that you have two towns that have been conducting trade back and forth, and uh, in the countryside between the two towns, there are some small hills or maybe even a mountain range. I don't know where your setting is or a swamp or something, but somehow um, some caravans of, of iron and weaponry and armor have been taken, and initially people have thought that it was bandits, um, but, you know, the party is able to investigate further and they track down the, the drag marks of these crates to some location that's an opening to an underground kind of area. And this is the Trog's lair. So now the party has to go get these things back. But now the Trog's are also armed. So they have better armor and some of them, not all of them, some of them have better armor and weapons. So instead of doing 1d4, they might be swinging long swords or wearing chainmail. So maybe you have a few, you know, boss trogs that have like armor and weapons, and then a bunch of the, you know, the more ferocious primitive trogs that are attacking the rest of the party. So I think they're, they're, it's not that these are uncommon. Lots of people use troglodytes in their adventures and they're very versatile. And sometimes my favorite monsters are the ones that are common for two reasons. As a DM, I like challenging myself to take what is common and make it uncommon or exceptional. 
Um, and number two, I think it's fun to keep the, the players on their toes. So the players might know the trogs as like weak you know, creatures that are low level, not that much different than kobolds or orcs or whatever. But by integrating into the storyline that these trogs have raided um, armor and weaponry caravans, you're now creating in a scenario where you have some tougher trogs. And remember, you can always upscale the leaders too in terms of their stats. So maybe you have five leaders who have, you know, instead of 13 hit points, they each have 30 hit points. And now they have better armor class because the armor and better weapon attacks. Um, so I think that that trogs could be used for much more than just low level encounters. I think you can integrate that in and even make them fun and challenging for a mid-level group. So I hope this has been kind of informative and fun. If you guys have used trogs before in a creative way, post it down in the comments. And as always, I appreciate your support. So please subscribe, like, and click on that notifications bell so that you don't miss any of our other videos. If you are a diehard supporter of our cause and you want to help even more, then you can always join us on Patreon for as low as a dollar a month to get exclusive access to exclusive content. Until next time, we'll see you.